Okay, so the next stage is to dry fit the inner gunnel. And you can see I've got it in place on the other side here. And uh, what I've done is I just took my uh, uh, front deck or breast hook uh, blank. Okay, you can see it's not even cut to shape or anything yet, but I've got that and I've got it to length where I want it to go. I laid out the seat and uh, a piece of wood in the center uh, to represent the carrying yoke or thwart, and then the same at the back, the seat and the, the, uh, the deck, okay? So laying that out uh, where it's supposed to be, I can now go along and mark with a pencil uh, every location uh, that can't have a space. So when I put in my spacing blocks on on the in walls, I know that where the seat goes needs to be solid for the bolt to go through. Okay. Um, same as the, uh, the the carrying yoke or thwart, uh, it needs to be solid at both sides so that this can get bolted down. Uh, and at this point, nothing would be worse than finishing the boat and finding that I've put a space there and then have to move the, the thwart or the seat three inches. Um, you know, it would still work out, you know, the boat's going to float, but to make it, uh, you know, the most efficient, then you need to just sort of do this, plan it all out ahead of time. Okay, uh, just an example on that, uh, the, the carrying thwart, uh, you could put it dead center, okay, and uh, that, that would be fine but it's better to move it forward just slightly of center. That way when you have the canoe up on your shoulders, it won't have a tendency to, you know, to balance forward or back. Instead, the weight will be more towards the back and that way your hands are in the front and it's, it's much easier to control that way. Okay, it doesn't have to be forward much, but just slightly. Okay, and same as the seat placement. Your plans will likely have the measurements of where the seats are supposed to go in your design. Um, but typically you just want to have the same space from the center of the back seat in the stern uh, the, from the front of the, the stern seat uh, to the center and then from the center to the front of the, the bow seat. Okay, That way again when you're sitting in the boat you have slightly more weight towards the back. Um, if I had the, the other way around then we'd have more weight towards the front and you know the canoe would be digging into the water as you went. Okay, instead you want the the bow of the boat to just be slightly up. Alright. So now I can go ahead and mark all these locations and yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, so let's talk about the gunnels for a minute. Um, Basically, we have two parts of the gunnels. We have an in wall, which goes on the inside of the hull, and a, a wall, which goes on the outside of the hull. Uh, with regards to the out wall, uh, it, they can be a variety of different uh, uh, widths and thicknesses, depending on the boat. And if you're working from a, a kit, your, your gunnel should be supplied. And if you're working from plans, there should be some detail inside of it. Um, you know, telling you like what the thickness should be. Uh, basically, we're working with hardwood now, and it's you're at the stage where you've got the the hull built, and you'll be surprised at how light it is right now. But as we're adding all of the hardwood in the seats and the gunnels and uh, our decks, um, the carrying yoke, we start adding a lot of weight. Okay, you'll be surprised at how much. Uh, your, your gunnels alone weigh and uh, so we're adding you know a few pounds right now so uh, with your uh, your out walls you might want to keep them thinner and again I'm not suggesting going against uh, you know your your plan designs because we don't want to make mistakes it's best to stick with it um, but just you know for the purpose of this video if we consider that uh, adding a uh, 3 8 inch uh, out wall as opposed to a 3 quarter inch out wall, we're saving half the weight, okay? Um, but there could be design elements that uh, you need to 
keep in mind, okay, especially if you're building a, a boat like a rowboat. Okay, and uh, I'll just grab something and show you. Okay, so what I have here are a set of oar locks, okay, and uh, uh, these are the straps that uh, go on the side of the, the gunnel, and these measure uh, one inch. Actually, it's one inch and one eighth, okay? So, it, for me to put these on the side of a rowboat, uh, I have to make sure that I have, you know, a minimum of uh, one inch and one eighth to get this on and have it look right, okay? Uh, so, for something like this, and even that's not including the centerpiece, okay, which is uh, brings the whole uh, piece of hardware to two inches, all right? Uh, so to use to to create a an outwall to suit this, like I said, I'm definitely going over an inch. Um, in most cases, three quarters of an inch uh, high, okay, is going to be you know enough for a canoe. Um, I'll just have a quick measurement here. So what I'm using today, mine are seven eighths of an inch, okay, and the thickness of mine are actually three eighths of an inch thick. Okay, so now we go on to the in walls, and with those, uh, the same, the thickness doesn't matter, but it does depending on how you're going to hang the rest of your hardware. Okay, if you want to mount uh, your canoe seats up underneath the in walls using the in walls as a support, okay, and bolting them on, then your in walls need to be three quarters of an inch thick when complete. All right. If you're going to mount your seats to the side of the boat with brackets, then uh, it doesn't matter. You could do three eighths of an inch or quarter inch for the in walls. All right. Um, so the other consideration is the spacer blocks and whether or not to use them. And it's entirely up to you. Uh, they, they have function as well as form. They do make the canoe, uh, you know, look a little bit fancier. Um, and what I'm talking about are just uh, these, these again, these are just my sample strips from earlier um, but they're, they're blocks of wood that you know will cut uh, to three or four inches okay and then laminate them onto the side of the gunnel okay and space them apart again three or four inches apart. Uh, they do make the, the in wall look fancier like I said uh, but the function is also that you can imagine when you go to uh, drain a canoe, you've spent a day on a river and it's got some water in the side, uh, you tip it over. If you have a three quarter of an inch in wall, that, then there's a surface that the water has to get beyond to get out of your canoe. So by putting the, uh, the spaces, uh, the water will run right out. Okay, and just to make it entirely clear, the spaces uh, go up against the hull and then the solid strip to the inside. Okay, so then having the spacer blocks, I'll cut, uh, like I said, three or four inch long spacers out of three eighths thick material. Okay, and I've prepared this material to match the width of my gunnel. Okay, so that way when I glue it up, there's not going to be any bumps or anything to worry about in the future. Okay, so now after I've dry fitted my in walls and marked all the locations for the spacer blocks, uh, I've then gone and uh, you know double checked all the measurements and then marked them, duplicated them on uh, another set, okay, at full length, um, and then uh, went and cut all the the blocks. So one thing I also did was uh, where I uh, have a spacer block, so these ones are for the seats, I've written down the measurement on the, the, the long in wall strip and then also on the piece when I cut it. So then you know I've ended up with uh, uh, you know I would say probably about 30 different uh, 30 blocks, uh, 24 are the uh, the small three inch size, you know, and then other sizes. So I, I wrote down on, you know, the, the larger ones, 
what size they are. So then when I dry fit it on the bench, you know, it's just easy to, you know, know which one's which. So, you know, I've got like 18 here and uh, these ones over here, they're seven inches. Um, you know, and then now I've laid it out and I've got them both side by side so I can double check, you know, through uh, each area and uh, make sure that it's right. Uh, you know, I, as you can imagine, I just want to save uh, frustration from the future. Uh, the next step is to use thickened epoxy and glue these blocks down. So it would be a real bummer if, uh, you know, I got to a spot and, you know, it wasn't the right size or I glued the wrong block in the wrong space and that type of thing. I had to start all over again. Uh, so everything looks good and I'm going to get mixing some epoxy and uh, get these laminated up and let them sit. Okay, so I've got my epoxy thickened up and uh, what you want is about the consistency of peanut butter. You can see, right, or mayonnaise. Right, it will drop off but it's really thick. Most of it sticks to the your stirring stick. We'll set off the stick. Okay. Now I've got a half inch brush. Alright. And all I'm gonna do is put epoxy on to one side. And then I'll just flip that over and lay that in place. And move my way down and keep working along.